Biology virtual students, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use allaboutbirds.org and ebird.org to get the valuable information about migration, food, nesting, habitat, and the ecological niche or way of life or role in the ecosystem of the birds that you'll be researching for your lab. So we're going to start with allaboutbirds.org. I'll teach you how to navigate this site. You'll look at the list of birds that I provided for you and you'll enter one of the birds. And in this case, um, let's use the American Red Start. And so I'll just say go. And what you'll find is pretty pictures of the American Red Start. You can also listen to the American Red Start. And we're also going to be able to use the life history. So if you look at the life history tab here, there's the habitat right there. It says American red stars breed in moist, deciduous, second growth woodlands with abundant shrubs across much of the eastern and northern United States and southern Canada. So that's a really good summary of the habitat right there. For our purposes in the lab, you need go no further. Food. They feed mostly on insects, including leaf hoppers, plant hoppers, flies, moths, and their larvae, wasps, and beetles. So they're primarily an insect eater. We don't need to go a lot further than that. Nest placement. The male shows the female potential nest sites. That's pretty cute. She tests out many sites. That's pretty awesome. But the nest is usually supported by the main trunk of a tree or shrub and a few other vertical stems. So it'd be like the upright fork of a, of a shrub. Common nest trees include maple, birch, ash, hawthorn, alder, eastern white cedar, cherry, balsam, poplar, and willow. I've even seen them in grapevines. Um, so we have habitat, we have food, we have nest. Now the behavior is gonna give you some insight into the ecological niche or way of life. And where it says males are defending their territories, blah, 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 I'm not looking for that. What I'm really looking for is um, this idea, I'm not really sure I like that. Let's go up here. Niche usually has to do with how they eat, how they live. Behavior, foliage, gleaner. It means they pull insects off of the foliage. But red starts are also an aerial insectivore meaning that they'll flutter around and catch flying insects, and they're very well adapted for that. All right, the next thing for migration, we wanna look at maps. And so when I click on the maps, I can see there's a migration map. Red means breeding range. So it seems that they breed in the Eastern United States, up into Canada, all the way up towards the panhandle of Alaska. And where do they overwinter? The Caribbean, very Southern tip of Florida, but primarily in Central America and Northern South America. So that is a true, complete tropical migrant. So that's how to use All About Birds to get information about the birds that you choose. Now I'm gonna show you another one, and this is called eBird. And specifically, we're gonna look at eBird science. So if I go to eBird uh, and I click on the tab science, now you can see my stats. Um, Yes, this is crowdsourced data. And so what that means is people around the world, including me, and perhaps some of you, are including this data to the scientific community. It's crowdsourced. Um, so this map that you see at Science right here that looks like the night sky all lit up with city lights, this is actually demonstrating where eBird checklists are coming from. And the more checklists, the brighter the light. Most eBird data is coming from uh, industrial areas that have good uh, internet connectivity. Uh, you can also see that it seems to come from cruise ships and shipping lanes. There's some de very deliberate lines across the ocean where people continually are seeing seabirds from ocean going vessels. All right, let's get into the American Red Star. If you click on eBird status and trends, and we're going to type in the bird again, in this case, it was the American Red Star. Here's the crowdsource abundance animation. This is the real story of recent years. This is where they actually are overwintering and migrating and breeding. And you can see that their breeding range seemed to have been inflated a bit in the All About Birds map. Where you see dark purple is where the, where the areas of significance are. And so when they're breeding, you can see that it's really a Northern bird, Wisconsin, Minnesota, so down in the tropics, you can see then an area of emphasis is in Cuba. Cuba is of great conservation concern for the American Red Start. We count on Cuba to keep our populations of Red Starts healthy. And now watch them come back up and migrate. And I'll pause in the summertime. You can see that 
the Mississippi River Valley and northern Wisconsin, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, some of the most important parts in all of the United States for this species of bird. So that's the migration and overwintering and summer residence and breeding of the American red start as captured by eBirders uh, and submitted to the eBird website. This is the crowdsourced data of citizen scientists at work. So now you know how to use allaboutbirds.org and eBird. You can look at the migration of the birds, their uh, relative abundance. You can look at their range. You can look at uh, their habitat, their food, their nest, their ecological niche. Using eBird and All About Birds gives you a lot of power to learn about the bird diversity that we have here in Wisconsin and that sort of interdependent relationship that Wisconsin has with other parts of the world. We need those other parts of the world to take care of our birds and those other parts of the world need Wisconsin to take care of their birds. It's a shared partnership. I'm going to boost your pride in Wisconsin by showing you a particular species of bird, the golden winged warbler. This bird is much appreciated in Central and South America. Bird guides love showing this birds to their clientele in the wintertime. So you can see just how dependent we are in other countries to take care of our bird, the golden winged warbler, but also the importance of Wisconsin in taking care of their bird, the golden winged warbler during its breeding season. Check out the importance of Wisconsin in the breeding range of the golden winged warbler. This is no small matter. Look at that map, that bright purple spot in Northwest Wisconsin. Yes, that is the global nesting population of the golden winged warbler. Now, if that doesn't give you some Wisconsin pride, I don't know what will. We are critically important in the breeding, the reproductive success of the golden winged warbler. Now, many of you may have never seen a golden winged warbler. They're very good at hiding, but there is a way to find them, and that is with your ears. Listen to this song. Bee, buzz, 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 buzz. So not the chickadee going tee, tee, not those other birds, but that bee, buzz, 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 buzz. There's a cat bird in the background there too. There it is, the golden winged warbler, bee, buzz, 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 buzz. When you're out and about along the Gandhi Dancer Trail or maybe up in the Sterling Pine Barrens, somewhere where you have alder swamps, somewhere where you have young aspen trees, or maybe near a place where there's been a logging operation and there's young brush, listen for that song. If you're near a mature forest, but you have an alder swamp or a young aspen forest or a logging operation, you will find a golden winged warbler. That's a bird that breeds here and pretty much nowhere else in the world. How cool is that? And look who we're partnering with, all those states along its migration corridor and all those nations that take care of it over the winter from November until April. All right, so in conclusion, I hope you enjoy allaboutbirds.org for its powerful tools in exploring the basic life histories of birds and eBird status and trends from eBird Science to explore the migratory pathways and areas of importance for these birds.